hello guys welcome once more to another video in our youtube channel so in this video we continue looking at the southwest regional mock 2024 pure maths with mechanics paper 3 we are going to be solving question 3 and it came from the topic moments and forces so let's get started all right so we are going to solve the a and the B part of the equation. So let me read the equation so we analyze and draw the diagram together. It reads the end of a uniform rod AB of mass M and length 4A is freely hinged to a point on the vertical wall. A particle of mass M is attached to the rod at B. One end of a light inextensible string is attached to the rod at C where AC is 3A. The other end of the string is attached to the wall at D, where AD is 2A and D is vertically above A. The rod rests horizontally in a vertical plane perpendicular to the wall and the tension in the string is T. Show that T is equal to mg root 13. Find the reaction of the hinge on the rod at A. Okay. So um, we start by drawing the diagram according to the equation. We have a vertical wall, we have a horizontal rod, that is the horizontal position of the rod is its position of equilibrium. Now the rod is hinged to the wall at a point A and on, on the other end of the rod, which is the point B, it carries a mass whose it carries a particle whose mass is M. Okay, now at the point C, we attach a light inextensible string, which is um, such that from A to C, the distance is 3A. And this inextensible string is also attached to the wall at the point D. And the distance between A and D is actually 2A. Okay, now there is tension in the string DC, okay, and the string is inextensible, so it does not extend. So the tension there makes an angle of theta with the horizontal because the tension is not horizontal, it's not vertical, it's with an angle with the horizontal. We can call the angle theta. So this tension, we have two components, the vertical component, which is T sine theta, and the horizontal component, which is T cos theta. Now, the particle whose mass is M will have weight Mg and the rod will also have weight Mg and the weight is going to be acting at the center that is halfway of the line halfway of the length ab since the mass of the rod was also m so we have successfully indicated all the forces acting in the system so since the system is in equilibrium the system is not moving then we need to use a concept that the sum of the forces in a given axis is zero that's the algebraic sum of forces along a given axis is zero and also the algebraic sum of moments about a point is also zero okay that is for the system to be in equilibrium all right um aside that we have the reaction at the hinge the reaction at the hinge we can give the value arrow the reaction is also acting at an angle with the horizontal so it has a vertical component and it also has a horizontal component okay um if we consider the system to be in equilibrium which was given to us we need to if we sum vertically we need to take all forces pointing up to be equal to all forces pointing down that's just a paraphrase of the statement so there are two forces pointing up we have t sine theta and we have the vertical component of the reaction so we sum them now we need to equate to the sum of all forces pointing in the opposite direction so we have mg plus mg that is 2mg that's the first equation now if we resolve the forces horizontally we are going to have that all forces pointing to the left we equate them to all forces pointing to the right to the right we have the horizontal component of the reaction and to the left we have the horizontal component of the tension so it means that for the second equation we have t cos theta is equal to rx 
now still at equilibrium we need to take moments all right because the algebraic sum of moment is zero or the clockwise moment is equal to the anti-clockwise moment now it is preferable to take moment either at a or at c because at a and at c they are the, the, the majority of the forces are, are acting at a and also acting at c so we are going to take moments at a so that we have something to do with the tension okay since you are supposed to prove that the tension is mg root 13 so if we take moments about a you realize that if you are taking moments about a right then this is a is actually the hinge so we need to take moment about this point now this force and this force will be causing clockwise moment okay why this other force will be causing will be causing an, an anti-clockwise moment so these two forces which are causing clockwise moment we need to find their moment and sum then we equate to the moment of this force here that is causing the anti-clockwise moment okay so if we take the first um if we take the first maybe if we, let's begin with the weight the weight of the weight of the of the rod the weight is mg and the distance separating the weight the perpendicular distance separating the weight and a is basically 2a two times small a because it is halfway of the rod so we have 2a plus if we take this other mg okay the this the, the the weight is mg and the perpendicular distance is the length of the rod which is 4a now we need to equate it to we need to take this other guy which is t sine theta and the distance separating the, the the perpendicular distance separating t sine theta and the point a is basically the distance from a to c which is 3a all right so basically from there i think we can now move on so um we need to add everything on the left hand side because they are like terms we have 6 mg to be equal to 3t sine theta the a's are common they are going to cancel off so if i divide both sides by 3 i am going to have that t sine theta is equal to 2 mg now if you look at equation one equation one so if t sine theta is 2 mg then you realize that equation one you are just going to have um or in fact since you are finding um uh, since you are finding the tension we can just continue from here okay where we are going to be finding the reaction we are now going to use equation one so um from here i need to find sine theta okay now you realize that this is a right angle triangle okay where the hypotenuse is actually equal to the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the square of the opposite to the angle plus the square of the adjacent so the square of the hypotenuse will be equal to 4a squared plus 9a squared when we square 2a we have 4a squared when we square 3a we have 9a squared so from there we can find the hypotenuse because the sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse so the hypotenuse is going to give us a root 13 so the sine of theta is basically the opposite which is 2a divided by a root 13 okay so we have t now this is just basically the sine of theta okay then we equate it to 2 mg now you will realize that the a's are going to cancel okay a is going to cancel with a and 2 is going to cancel with 2 so we multiply both sides by root 13 and we get that the tension is mg root 13 now the tension being mg root 13 we have proven it now we need to find the reaction at the hinge so we need the vertical and the horizontal component so that we get the reaction force so the vertical component is ry if the if t sine theta is equal to 2 mg right if i use equation one you realize that in the place of t sine theta i replace it with 2 mg it's going to cancel with the 2 mg on the right hand side when we subtract and we are just going to have ry to be equal to zero now ry being equal to zero we can find rx rx we just need to replace the tension we have in the second equation and we also find cos theta cos theta the tension is mg root 13 cos theta is adjacent divided by hypotenuse the adjacent is 3a and the hypotenuse is a root 13 a is going to cancel a 
alright root 13 is going to cancel root 13 and when we simplify we have that rox is equal to 3 mg so the reaction force is just rox times i it is it is a force so it has magnitude and direction so we have rox times i because ry is zero normally the reaction force is rox i plus ryj but since ry is zero we just talk about rox so the reaction force is 3 mgi now, for benefit of doubt, if this question was actually asking us to find the magnitude of the reaction force, in fact, when I see reaction, it means that we need to find the magnitude. But if they say find the reaction force, we need to write it as a force. Okay, so we need to get the magnitude of this reaction force, and the magnitude of the reaction force will just give us the Rx, which is 3mg. So we are done with the A and the B part of the equation. Okay, now in the second part of the equation, it reads, the particle of mass small m at the point B is removed from the rod and replaced by a particle of mass capital M, which is attached to the rod at the same point B. The string breaks if the tension exceeds 2 mg root 13. Given that the string does not break, show that capital M is less than or equal to 5 on 2 times small m. So what happens is that, the particle is the particle whose mass was small m has been replaced by a particle whose mass is capital M at the same point B. So the other forces in the system stay the same. All right. The only thing that is changing is that the particle at B has been replaced by a, another particle of mass capital M. Okay. So since the the, the equation says that, uh, in fact, the equation says that the string will break if the tension exceeds this value but actually the string does not break all right so if the string does not break it means that the system is still in equilibrium so we can basically take moments again we don't care about the forces we need to take moments so if we take moments still at a point a we need have we need to have if i take this guy here all right the the weight is mg and the perpendicular distance from a is 2a now, when we take this other guy here, which is capital MG, its own perpendicular distance will be 4A. And we need to equate to T sine theta times 3A. I think I explained this in the previous slide. We just have to change what we have, what we had, when, what we had when we had small m to capital M. Alright, so we can cancel off all the A's, okay, and we have 3T sine theta to be 2MG plus 4 capital MG. Now, from there... We need to find t okay we need to find the tension and then now we use the property that has been given to us so in the place of sine theta we we found sine theta previously and sine theta was basically 2a on a root 13 that's the value of sine theta so um that's what i have the a is going to cancel the a all right and then from there we can multiply all through by three all through by root 13 and then we divide all through by six because on the left hand side we, we we on the left hand side we actually have three times two which is six so six t that's what we have so to get t basically we are going to divide all through by six after multiplying all through by root 13. on the right hand side there is a common factor of g so we need to factorize that g and then we have what we have okay now there's a very important part of the equation it's saying that the string breaks if the tension exceeds this value what does it actually mean by the tension exceeds that value the tension exceeding that value means that the tension is actually greater than that value that is strictly greater than this value so if the tension is strictly greater than 2 mg root 13 then the string is going to break but the equation again further said that the string does not break Okay, so if the string does not break, it means that we are negating the statement of saying that the string breaks. And in inequalities or in logic, once we negate greater than, we have less than or equal to. That's a definition. So if I negate greater than, I get less than or equal to. So if the string breaks, the tension will exceed 2 mg root 13 so if the string does not break according to the equation then the tension will be less than or equal to 2 mg root 13 
okay so from there now since i have my tension already i just have to replace my tension with what i have above all right then i take less than or equal to 2 mg root 13. they are like terms on both sides let's see root root 13 mg we cancel with root 13 mg all right then we multiply all through by six here we are still going to be left with 2m plus 4 capital m but when we multiply all through by six this will become 12m now from there we need to subtract 2m on both sides where we are going to have 12m minus 2m is 10m then we divide both sides by 4 10 over 4 is the same as 5 over 2 so we have proven that if the string does not break then the new mass will be less than or equal to 5 on 2 times the original mass that was placed at the point b so thank you guys for watching we have come to the end of this video make sure you like the video you share the video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe see you guys in the next video